Welcome everyone to the Huntsman Knows How podcast. This is Donna Dare with Huntsman Communications, and we're thrilled to be discussing Huntsman's know-how when it comes to adhesives and how Huntsman is enabling tomorrow's technologies. I'm excited to be joined today by our adhesives experts, Mark Ecker, Senior Account Manager for Adhesives, and Mike Andreata, Regional Marketing Manager for Automotive and Industrial. Hello, gentlemen, and welcome. Thanks, Don, for having us. Yes, thanks for having us. So, Mike, why are adhesives relevant in manufacturing today? So, uh, we know that, you know, the first references to, to adhesives in literature was about 2000 B.C. And we also know that the, the Greeks and Romans uh, developed and, and helped lead the development of adhesives, um, you know, during their reign. And so, the use of adhesives in adhesive-like substances isn't new. And everyone here in this room used adhesives when we were kids, right? So, we were all in elementary school using glue to bond two pieces of paper together. At the time, I'm assuming none of us here were actually thinking about, okay, what kind of chemistry is this? Uh, what other types of applications can glue be used in and those types of things. Um, but we've all, you know, we all used them. Many of us still probably use them in their garages and workshops, you know, and we think about adhesives and glue, though, in, in, uh, in terms of repairing and fixing. And there are industrial MRO applications where, you know, people are going off and, and using adhesives to fix and repair, you know, whether it's wind blades or, you know, parts of manufacturing plants, et cetera. But most of the applications that we're seeing are OEM related um, in designing and building new materials, you know, that have increased and improved strength and performance and sealing and protection and, you know, structural integrity, things like that. So, um, you know, they're very prevalent, you know, still to this day. Uh, you know, specifically, you know, pertaining to Huntsman, our uh, Aerodite branded adhesives were launched in the 1940s initially, you know, as a DIY application, but then soon moved into you know, aerospace and industrial and automotive type applications. And challenges, I mean, that's the one thing I see in the field consistently, you know, time after time is basically just engineers, you know, they say, hey, Mark, you know, I decided to choose this substrate. It's nice, it's soft, it's pliable. You know, makes a lot of sense for what we're trying to do, and I'm going to take it, I'm going to attach it to a piece of steel, and then I'm going to reroute it around there, and I'm going to go back to a silicone piece, and all these things sound great as far as an engineering standpoint and everything, too, but when they go to actually, you know, bond and put these assemblies together, they're realizing there's no surface energy on anything. So when it comes down to actually join them, you can't do a fastener, you can't do a weld, um, you're like, oh, it must be, you have to use an adhesive, and then they realize that there's no surface energy on anything, and how are they going to activate this material? So you see that all the time, you know, with, you know, coatings of metals to prevent rust on bridges, um, you know, elastomerics with rubber things so they can have particles that can adjust and modify but then, you know, be soft to the touch. Plastics are consistently changing over and over. I, I constantly reference a, a plastics bonding guide I've used for years that, I literally have to use the link because there's so many new different plastics that are updated all the time. So they're, you know, low cost, uh, lightweight, light weighting. So there's just constantly changing. So the th problem and challenge I see all the time is, you know, how are we going to put this widget together at the end of the day? Mm -hmm. You know, I think the thing is people don't realize that, you know, adhesives everywhere. Um, this room we're sitting in right now, I mean, there's a table here and chairs and a TV and lighting and light fixtures. I mean, there's probably... 45 to 50 glue applications in this room we're sitting at right now, if you were to outline it, anything from the supports on the table here to the, um, the outlet over there and behind there and the insulation in the wires to the lighting to the bulbs. There's probably 12 different glues in this TV over here, the computer, microphone. I mean, it just, it's just people don't realize if you, uh, there's adhesive beads and lines and, you know, adhesive everywhere you go. So you're protecting and sealing with just about, you know, everything you can possibly think of, so... What are the top reasons why people choose structural adhesives? Um, well, there's a handful of them. Um, top of my head, and as far as what's most relevant today, I would say the most popular I'm encompassing every day is probably lightweighting products. You know, automotive industry is a perfect example. I mean, you know, cars used to be, you know, welded and fastened, you know, all the way through the beginning since Model T. So if you look at modern-day cars now, basically I'd say they're all primarily glued together. So the main thing we're trying to do there is, you know, increase MPGs, fuel efficiencies, you know, moving to carbon fiber, light weighting, you know, higher strength with these new carbon composites. So um, light weighting is a big one, but there's a lot of other ones too, you know, freedom of design. Um, when you're choosing your materials, like I was saying earlier, you know, you might choose a gazillion different plastics and then you go to bond them and if 
you can't ultrasonically weld two different like substrates or, you, you know, there's, there's a lot of limitations. So if you're using an adhesive and you plan on using the adhesive, you have a lot more freedom in your design. So there's also, um, you know, displacing stress. I don't want to keep, you know, beating up on mechanical fasteners where I originally, you know, cut my teeth in. But, you know, basically those are stress points every time you have a through hole. So if you do that in a piece of carbon fiber, you're basically taking those internal strands and you're breaking them. So you actually just made your entire carbon fiber structure that much more weaker. So if you eliminate that, you use an adhesive bead throughout that, not only are you having superior strength, but you're actually sealing it and protecting it from environmental elements too. Well, and and if you drill a hole in something, you're introducing um, possible corrosion down the road also, right? It's a leak path, absolutely. So every time you do that, if you don't have a fancy washer, and even the washers too, if you over tighten or loosen them, I mean, you know, water has a centipoise of one, which I know means nothing to you guys, but it's basically, you know, it'll run and go anywhere. So if you make a hole, it's going to find a way to ooze in, whether through shrinking and expansion or what the case may be. So yeah, if you can avoid the through hole, um, you, you definitely want to. So how do you choose? How do you know which adhesive is right for your product or particular assembly process? In the field, kind of look at it as a three-step process, basically. Um, step one is, you know, what are you trying to build? What are you using? You know, what's it going to take and everything? So, I mean, you know, that kind of helps you identify, you know, what, you know, if you go with epoxy and acrylic, you know, you kind of start shortening the path of, um, you know, what you're going to end up using as an adhesive. So you kind of look at all that, and then after you kind of determine the materials and the appropriate adhesive for your project and everything, then you kind of look at production. That's kind of step two. So, you know, who's going to be building these things? You know, who's the technicians? Is this stuff going to need to be ventilated? Is it going to smell bad? Is it going to be EH&S friendly? So you kind of have to look at the production time then, too. And then are you meeting production time's goals as well? I mean, how many parts are they trying to do per day? So, I mean, if they're trying to do five, you have all the time in the world. If they're doing, you know, 300,000 parts a day, they might have to rack them and let that glue fully cure. So you have to kind of look at all the uh, production aspects of it, I would say. It's kind of like a good step, too. And then a lot of people almost kind of tend to stop there, not to say, you know, the best of the best engineers, but I always kind of remind everybody that, you know, what's the life cycle look like? This part ABC that you're making, I mean, is it going to live 10 years? Is it going to be buried in the ocean? Is it going to the moon? You know, what's, what's going to happen to this thing once we glue it together and send it out on its way? Obviously, if you don't think about that step in step three, then, you know, you get a lot of warranty and scrap work, and then people lose confidence in adhesives and there's a lot of, um, you know, deterrence out there. You know, people put things, you know, UV is a tough one we're always challenged with. So um, kind of got to look at this three-step process as far as what will you need, what does production look like, what is the life cycle, and the long term of the product look like. And you've been doing this for 17 years now. 17 so, and years. And I think you would probably you know, agree with when you first started doing this, epoxies was the kind of the, the end-all, be-all in terms of what adhesive to use. But we've seen acrylics get better with you know, chemical exposure protection. We've seen polyurethanes get better in terms of UV protection. So in the past, it may have been a one-size-fits-all. We're going to recommend an epoxy, and now you have other options. Yep, we used to say if you don't know epoxy, you know, whereas that's not really truly the case anymore. So traditionally, epoxy used to be all known as, you know, superior chemical resistance, you know, high TG, glass transition, that is, as far as before it melts. So if you need something that's 350F+, plus, you know, you're only pretty much looking at an epoxy, but, you know, the downside was always they were kind of brittle. There wasn't a lot of elongation. So, there, you know, that was always a challenge with an epoxy. And if you had to deal with a plastic, usually epoxies then were out. That's a good thing about, uh, you know, modern-day acrylics, and a lot of those are in the Aerodite 2000 line as well, too, that, you know, we can actually deal with plastics. We can do stronger bite time. We can still do chemical resistance. We can do a faster bond time where epoxies were traditionally a little bit slower, but, you know, there was a lot of shrinkage if you used a fast epoxy. So, you know, we're over combat a lot of those challenges actually with an acrylic or polyurethane so and in epoxies too like i said um you know there are rubber toughened epoxies now as well too and you know they do do well in plastic so they've changed so much the last 10 or 15 years to basically adjust to modern day substrates yeah you can tell the conversations have definitely changed uh, at least even over the last couple of years so earlier you mentioned freedom of design so when we look at all the types of products that are on the market today, right, they're sleeker, they have curves, they're crazy in different shapes, and I would assume that without adhesives, um, if you were having to bolt or rivet um, any of those products, those sleeker designs wouldn't be possible. Yeah, I, w I would agree with that because you're looking at automotive um, industries like aerospace with the you know, kind of all fiberglass you know, composite construction uh, materials. It does allow for the sleeker, more curvy exterior that you're talking about. But 
requiring adhesives where if, if you had you know your typical aluminum that's when you would be using you know your bolts and your your fasteners etc so i don't think you'd be able to see the the slick designs that you're seeing now without the without the adhesive look so i think you're absolutely right don so can you give us some examples of applications where using adhesives positively impacted the design of a product so we recently had a really cool example with and we just touched on it but the um uh, an all composite construction aircraft that we were working on with the customer the, uh, the fuselages the wings all the other components were, were molded in fiberglass so outside of the typical aluminum um, exterior that you would see which would require then their, their bolts and the fasteners etc so by going to an all composite construction it allowed for that sleek you know design u- utilizing adhesives yeah, like that's a great example. And then, um, you know, one that I even can think of too, as far as it was a big uh, design process, was um, uh, especially the trailer manufacturer. They manufacture, uh, you know, dirt bikes, quads, ATV trailers. So, you, can, you know, they're kind of high end toys in a way, you know. Things cost a lot of money. And basically, the guy was, hey, you know, every time we do one of these, you know, we put the, you know, the racing team they represent or, you know, decals on the exterior. So, you know, we have all these rivets, you know, there's a lot of leak paths, we go through drill bits, you know, tons, it takes too much time. I'd like to just glue these together, but I don't know if it's possible. So that's kind of how the conversation all began. So at the end of the day, we end up doing overlap joints and um, eliminating them all, you know, reducing production time. And when the um, trailer was all done and they sent it to the graphic designer and put the decal on it, you know, it was nice and clean and said, you know, XYZ racing on it. Not only did they not have any leak paths like we talked to her with all the rivets and things of that nature, but they just had a nice, cleaner-looking trailer. So there wasn't all those bumps and everything all over it. So that was a pretty cool, um, you know, and that's getting more and more popular, too. I, I know over in the EU, uh, you know, they do, you know, for a lot of their tractor trailer trailers, they actually do do glue them over there, whereas the United States, we just haven't jumped on that quite yet. Uh, we still, I think it's like 70 80 percent of our trailers are actually still riveted. So um, that's a big emerging market that we're trying to, um, you know, attack every day. Well, and I imagine if you get rid of the, the rivets and the screws, you're reducing the weight of the trailer as well. So there could be a fuel consumption savings there as well. Don, that's a great point. I mean, because basically it's kind of a catch-all. You know, we talked already about light weighting and freedom of design and, you know, aesthetics and, you know, replacing mechanical fasteners. So, I mean, it's, it's a good change for the end user, customer, and the production folks. So where do you see adhesives being used in the future are there particular trends that are driving the technology? Um, I mean, yes, absolutely. I mean, electric vehicle is, you know, everybody's talking about it. Uh, every conference, everything, you know, the big change with going to battery-powered vehicles and the challenges that persist in the infrastructure. I mean, everybody's talking about electric vehicles. So um, just in the last 20 years, automotive vehicles, we you know, mentioned earlier, as far as welding to adhesives, I mean, that continues to evolve into, you know, primary everything being glued in the automotive market. But these electric vehicles, they have these big batteries in there, and they put out a tons of heat. So, you know, you can have these, you know, catastrophic thermal runaways, you know, where, you know, cars catch on fire and everything. So you basically we're using a lot of adhesives, not only inside the batteries to make them, but also from like a, um, a thermal protection. So, you know, when these things put out a lot of heat, we can kind of have an adhesive, you know, um, I guess you'd say almost instead of like a, a honeycomb, you kind of have like a filler in there that goes around the battery that kind of dissipates all that um, that heat energy coming out of there. So that's going to be a huge market with electric vehicles. I know I think that's a great point. And I think what we're seeing too is, and we've, we've touched on it, is the um, continued streamlining and optimization from a production standpoint. You know, manufacturing sites are always looking to to improve cost and, and, and reduce downtime, increase efficiencies. And one of the ways they do that is getting away from, bolts and fasteners and welding and going to adhesives helps, you know, helps uh, achieve those goals. You know, we're seeing increased bonding in, in harsh conditions. Uh, we have a lot of customers, you know, who are out in, you know, underwater, who have to do repairs underwater. We're out in, you know, really extreme wind and rain, and it's, it's not easy to get up there and, and have to do a lot of bolting and riv- riveting and, and welding. So adhesives is the, you know, where we want to go or where they check, choose to go. Uh, with these repairs. Uh, flexibility, you know, p- people want additional elongation and, and high flexible options. So, you know, those are the kind of things that we're seeing kind of a day-to-day, not only current, you know, short term, but kind of in the next couple of years where the market's going to continue to go. The one I'm seeing and have been for the last couple of years that's, you know, extremely important to, you know, even myself personally, I mean, I have young kids and hope to be around a long time to see my grandkids and everything too. So, I mean, sustainability is, you know, you hear that everywhere. Every single company, whether they have four goals, five, six, seven, one of them guaranteed and probably up front is sustainability. So 
what a big trend what we're looking for is biodegradable adhesives. So um, I do believe that's going to be the way of the future. You know, um, we recently launched our low odor, low toxicity um, methyl methacrylate, you know, part of our acrylic family in the core 2000 at Huntsman. And basically, you know, that's, you know, kind of keeping the worker in mind. You know, we can ship that overnight via plane where traditionally in that chemistry always had to go ground no matter what. So that's advantageous, advantageous to the customers. And, um, you know, it's, it's more sustainable. So low odor, you know, the you know, employees don't feel like, you know, you're, you're changing from a methacrylate to our new low odor product. You know, that's going to make everybody on the floor much happier. I mean, it doesn't smell like, you know, you can't taste your sandwich at lunchtime. The odors are so strong and pungent. So, And a lot of these guys are bonding in very tight quarters in absolutely tight condition. so to have a, a an odorous product sitting there um, as they're bonding in a very tight space was was a it's not an ideal situation from an ehs ehs standpoint with regards to sustainability we've been able to identify where where the trends are going what the market's going to be doing um, what the consumer and customer wants and we've been able to kind of get at the forefront of that you know through some of the low odor launches we've had low toxicity, et cetera, we've been able to really be at the forefront of innovation and ensuring the sustainability, um, EHS compliance. Yeah, and at, at Huntsman, I mean, you know, you're talking to the experts. We have, you know, a world-class laboratory application engineers that specialize in aerospace and automotive and industrial. So, you know, what sets us apart is we can take, you know, customer samples. We can tear them apart, break them apart. We can do salt spray, heat aging, you know, all kinds of stuff that, Customers need to basically have that, you know, confidence before they take one of our adhesives and put it on one of their drawings and put it out there. So um, I feel like myself and some of the, you know, past experiences, I can give them some good sound advice and starting points. And, yeah, and it's a great fit for, you know, customers that need that detailed support and guidance throughout their project. And I think it's exciting to see how much adhesives have changed over the last 200,000 years. But specifically, if we look at the last, you know, 10 years, the changes that we've seen in the industry, and we look at what, where the industry is going to be in the next 10 years, I think we're really well positioned to be able to meet the the, the challenges in the market, where uh, the concerns customers have. Um, you know, I, I think we're in a really good spot right now between our our commercial capabilities, our technical folks, the things we're working on from an innovation standpoint, our marketing capabilities. I think we're really well positioned to meet the needs of the customer. Well, great. Well, I want to thank you both for your time and your insights today. It's great to hear about Huntsman's know-how when it comes to adhesives and how it impacts many of the products that we're using in our everyday lives. We invite anyone who's listening, if you have questions or want to know more about the material solutions discussed today, you can send those to Huntsman Knows How at Huntsman.com. Thank you all for tuning in.